Okay, so All we right. broke we broke the car, <laughs> turtle mode. <laughs> so guys, I did this a year ago with you walking me at home, uh, chief test engineer of vehicle dynamics, <laughs> the Polestar 3 prototype. Again, I broke the Polestar 3. Sorry, Joachim. Sorry, Roger. And sorry, Christian. Uh, I'll uh, start by putting the headband around your head. Okay, and perfect. You just let me know if it's too tight or uncomfortable anywhere. Welcome to the video, guys. So I'm currently being rigged up with uh, sensors because I'm participating, and you may have seen it from the title of the video, in a research project with Polestar uh, to find out what triggers happiness, joyness, cheerfulness, pleasure when it comes to driving and driving dynamics. So it seems Polestar taking this mission of becoming, you know, a, an electric car brand where the goal is to compete against Porsche and other performance brands pretty seriously. And I'm dedicating, I just signed like a two or four page waiver where it's in their hands now. It's not my responsibility. So... So from now on, we're into uncharted territory. <laughs> After connecting the sensors, they hooked me up to a computer for baseline testing and baseline calibration. Uh, yeah, it's pretty, uh, like uh, with a high temporal accuracy, so meaning like um, it records uh, very accurately uh, for timing, so we can see second by second. Um, that's I, I don't know how exciting that is because uh, it's just you sitting here with the glasses on and like your eyes closed and jamming to your song. Yeah. Oh, my, what's my favorite song nowadays? I have to have to check my Spotify then. Can I do that now or do I have to sit yeah, still? Yeah, no, no, no. Right, you can you can do it right now. Right, so upwards is left. Everything else is right. Okay. 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 Second test. There's a red dot blinking in the middle of the screen about every two seconds for three minutes. Hit the space bar every time you see the red dot. Red dot. Okay. Hit for red dot. Yeah. It's the second test on you. It's okay. auditory. So there will be a sound playing, like a gong sound, kind of. Mm -hmm. Every time you see it, you hit the space bar while your eyes are closed. Okay. <laughs> All right? Pretty straightforward. For the first one, there's a little practice session. Okay. So let me just... The headphones on you, and if you want to adjust them, go ahead and do that now. Mm -hmm. Perfect. And then whenever you're ready, just hit the left arm key to start the practice. Okay. And the left one. No. Yeah, perfect. So we're going to go out on an ice track here now. We're going to do a few laps. We're going to do the measurements. I have Teo. Teo. So he's the expert. He's the guy with the laptop. He's the, the scientist, right? <laughs> More and or less. So we're going to go out on this track. We're going to do some fun driving and drifting. Uh, you, Teo, you have not uh, sat with any of us today going sideways on this track, right? No. No. So maybe you should also have like <laughs> one of these to measure uh, <laughs> like shock and awe. Uh, exactly. And then, so we're going to do this, and then also we're going to later, we're going to just go on a normal road, just normal, boring driving. So we have to track for ourselves now, right? So my yeah. vision is a little bit impeded. We have a camera here, a camera there also. So it's not, you know, optimal, but we're going to do the best we can do. Hmm. So I drove the Polestar 3 the first time on an ice track about a year ago with a chief test engineer, Joachim Riedholm. Uh, like the guy who is responsible for chassis tuning on this car and this car has a method to it like it has this rare um, that torque, rec torque vectoring rear differential that actually lets you you know rotate the car but there's also a lot less um, you know it lets you a lot less slip is allowed by the ESC even though you know ESC is in sport mode it's not totally you know undefeated and now that like the belts are really tightening now but it allows a little bit of play it allows you to you know go for the th for these you know angles i'm just gonna slow down a little bit so mm -hmm. the belt like <laughs> slacks there um so it lets us you know get these really nice drift angles but it doesn't you know i wish it just allowed a little bit more more wheel spin but it is it is good fun it's maybe a lot safer more controlled than that uh pull stuff for but at the same time, it is impressive for a large, almost five meter long SUV. And you know, when you're looking out of the side window, 
that's fun, right? So I'm just gonna move up my seat a little bit. It's just restricting me. This is a lot more aggressive when it comes to just tightening the seat belts than that Polestar 4. But it's still very good fun. I do prefer the Polestar 4 though. Let's see if we can, yeah. I mean, this car pretty much goes where you point it. It's a lot less drama than <laughs> that uh, Polestar 4 but it's still very, very good fun. So how are you? Are, are you fine? In the I am seat? doing well. Okay, great. Yeah. I was trying to check the recordings. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you, have you ever been sideways like this on an ice track? No, this is my first time okay. on an ice track and uh, earlier was a lot less sideways. Yeah, it was, yeah, 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 yeah. So I'm just going to probably adjust my seat belt. Oh, let's see if we can do that. Yeah, we can, it allows nice. us to go sideways. Actually, you can get into a nice rhythm with this car where it actually allows you to do a lot of sideways action. Mm. You just have to trust the car. So I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna adjust my seat again because yeah, once it tightens the seat belt, this car, it's, it, it restricts my go. movement. Okay. How do we so loosen it? Yeah, um, just take it off then. <laughs> yeah. So it is pretty aggressive. So let's go again. Okay, let's see if we can have a little bit of fun here. Everything, now that goes on, that's strange. So it went into, okay, let's go. So what I really like about this Polestar 3 is that Steering is very communicative, weights up really nicely under these conditions, even though it's slippery, lets you know have really nice control of the car and also the suspension, like it's comfortable, but at the same time, it's also communicative. So we're gonna put the extension into, let's go into this, a little bit of a more firm setting, medium setting, and maybe just lighten up the steering a little bit because this is the performance version I'm driving. I think I drove the non-performance earlier that has a little bit lighter steering and just overall a much softer setup. I think maybe this performance is more playful than the normal dual motor version. Try not to hit any of these poles. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, nice rhythm. There we go. Okay. Through these cones and let's see if we can get a good big old drift this way. There we go. <laughs> nice. That's part of the fun. Yeah, luckily it's only snow, so. <laughs> okay, so we, right. broke, we broke the car, <laughs> turtle mode. <laughs> so guys, I did this a year ago when you were came at home. Uh, chief test engineer of vehicle dynamics, <laughs> the Polestar 3 prototype. Again, I broke the Polestar 3. Sorry, Joachim. Sorry, Dogit. And sorry, Christian, for, yeah, breaking your car. <laughs> so you're from Germany, right? You're from mm -hmm. Hamburg. You live in Copenhagen, right? Exactly. So flatlands, flatlands, and then now you're in Norway. And like, we're doing this test on a normal Norwegian country road. I mean, the results may be a little bit skewed, right? Because it's so beautiful. <laughs> we're still getting pleasure, yeah. right? That, that's that's the, the thing we're interested in, right? Like, uh, we're using a normal road that's, you know, publicly accessible and so on. Um, so it's just, uh, of course, in beautiful Norwegian nature, but. Exactly. So it's not a, a fair comparison. Maybe Norwegian nature will win out. Maybe we're gonna prove something in this video. It's like. It's more pleasurable, more enjoyable to go to Norway than to drive <laughs> a car fast, maybe. Could, could be, but then also like we're measuring your reaction, right? Exactly. So like if, if you would measure my reaction, I might have a stronger reaction mm -hmm. towards the uh, nature. Sure. Would you like me to be quiet or can I keep on talking? Or do no, 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 we can uh, chat a little bit. Yeah. I might actually need a break in a second, just mm -hmm. breathing some fresh air. Yeah, yeah, no problem at all. But, uh, 
So guys, the, the car's now set into comfort mode, the most soft the suspension. Um, I'm gonna put the steering wheel into its lightest. It just, it's a very comfortable car, this. I know this isn't like a review of the Polestar 3. I've driven it so many times before, but like I think it's useful also for the context of this video, me giving my feedback. Uh, because people may be watching this video because they want to know how this car performs also and it, even though we're on 22 inch wheels this is the performance pack this car has two chamber air suspension and it's just so smooth and refined over this pretty harsh icy snowy road here on this like it's a public road but we're like in the middle of the mountain here we're like I don't know 40 kilometers from any civilization so we're pretty far in the woods and also even here the steering is nice and precise you guys know I really like the Polestar 3 this is probably the SUV I'd recommend you guys to get in this price bracket so even in Germany for my many German viewers and I know you guys have expensive electric cars more so than here in Norway or in the Netherlands like what you're saying also about cognitive load right like here yeah. I'm not investing because here probably a lot of the processing is just uh, subconscious right yeah. Because this is trained behavior and I could probably be looking at my phone driving here pretty safely and but I wouldn't remember anything, right? Because Exactly. It but on the on the track, it's so much more focused, right? And decision, mm -hmm. decision, 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 right? Mm -hmm. But here it's not I am just guessing. Like I'm I'm this is not No, no, it, exactly. So like basically when we're talking about these metrics, right? Like all of them have um, an optimal range, mm. right? Or, uh, I mean, in terms of motivation, it's like positive or negative, right? Exactly. So all of them have these ranges of values that we would want them to be within. Mm -hmm. And through that, yeah, like for example, now if we see that uh, you are not processing a lot of information. So we want let's, to go down here again, yeah. Yeah, exactly, but um, exactly, just go around the corner and then we'll quickly stop the recordings. Um, And then loosen this, this up, and then if I can ask you to take off the glasses for yeah, me. Sure. Perfect, and just take them up because there's this uh, headband around. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. There we go, perfect, thank you. And then you're free again, free. well, halfway free. Exactly, if you just go into the tent and then we'll take off the EEG and everything, and uh, then you'll feel freedom. Exactly. Unfortunately, I'm not allowed to publish the actual study. Maybe I will be able to do that in the future, but it is very detailed. It's like 10 or 15 pages, but I do have a summation because it wasn't only me this day participating in this science project. There were two others, a female influencer about my age and another a car journalist a little bit younger than me. Um, who doesn't, you know, work full time as a journalist the same way as I do and doesn't have maybe the same experience behind the wheel doing ice track driving as I do. But the results are still very interesting. So we were, they were using this EEG uh, measurement tool and also eye tracking. And as you saw in the video, they calibrated, uh, you know, um, my brain activity by doing meditation, by doing some tasks. Uh, cognitive tasks and also by listening to my favorite song and here are the results it's in a region but I'm going to try to translate it here it is very interesting uh, because they say here that our brains were in our best mental state you know um, our best cognitive state about 60% of the time while driving the car on an ice track 56% of the time while listening to our favorite song and 30% of the time while doing meditation so according to this study your brain is in a better mental state behind the wheel of a Polestar 3 on an ice track it's more satisfying and more balanced for your mind driving the Polestar 3. So I don't know compared to other cars because we don't you know have any reference data for for example a Porsche or a BMW or, or, or something else. So you know we won't be able to tell if this is better than with other cars but what's really interesting is that you know it, it is better than listening to your favorite song or listening or, or doing meditation. But what's interesting is that my specific measurements, because I had a different scores than the other people, maybe because of my occupation, maybe because of my, 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 you know, my hobbies, maybe because of my love for cars. So my brain was in its highest cognitive state 70% of the time, while the average was, was 60. So 
quite significantly higher than the other participants. And I also had the highest engagement of emotional pleasure at 23%. And they were also measuring mental overload. So what's interesting, during the meditation, 12% of the time, my brain was in mental overload. But only 3% of the time, while I was driving the Pulsar 3 actively on an ice track, was my brain in a mental oversta overload state. And what's really interesting here, according to their study, is that my brain really thrives in a high pace, high gear, high load environment and you know I am a very sociable person a very outgoing I, I really you know have fun when I'm with a lot of people and maybe we're out it, it's noisy a lot of things are happening so that is very interesting and also lastly that my brain really thrives when it's being pushed so that's why you know they say when I was driving on an ice track I was really in the zone I was moving my eyes a lot you know looking down at the track and then far in the distance looking where the car was going I was also looking at the instruments to get you know as much information as possible so I think this is a very interesting find and it's really interesting to have it on paper that you know this is my results but you know to take the takeaway from this is that it was a really fun experience I don't know if you we're, were necessarily learning anything of value but it's really interesting to see that well Polestar are taking their mission to try to find what triggers uh, happiness and, and, and motion in driving. And this is a nice step in that direction. So guys, let me know what you think about the results uh, down below. Do you think this is a fun video? Should I participate in more stuff like this? Let me know in the comment section down below. So guys, I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, please drop me a thumbs up down below. And for more car content, as always, please subscribe. See you guys later. Goodbye.